back to a video. Guess what today's game is? It's Once Upon a Time in China, another one of those weird gently filmed sets of Genjic turn to an RPG. And yeah, it's gonna be more chaos, so good luck with me. So yeah, first we start out with these guys walking in, just taking the woman like she's a statue. Of course, not forgetting the terrifying that we got corners, they stop, and then we get our first real cutscene. Oh yeah, I hope you like the entire fact that they just use these trees all over again, except that about... To make a forest, they had to, like, use half trees. And we finally got unique backgrounds and this turning thing. Great thing, Sinjin Nanjing. Also, why in the world is the face weird? But... Very neat background. Anyway, we don't even get through that battle, and he just, like, runs off. After even more talking with... ...even weirder, nice people. Here's where it gets to the weirder parts. For number one, any single time you walk, you... ...your eyes just start blinking like crazy. And you're also, your head is shrinking both up and down when you're walking. And also, serious. Later reuse into smiling crowd wonder, so great things, Sinjin Nanjing. Oh, yeah, and also nice try, Nanjing. You try to reuse one of your people in this game, but it doesn't even look that good. Yeah, so here's more time to wander around town, going to a person that exactly looks like you. You get something from them. And they're just playing stuff from the Heroes of Jin Young again. Great thing, Sinjin Nanjing. Great thing. Oh great, there's this woman over here. So I guess you're gonna have to talk to all the people around town just to get to the next area. Sorry. Oh yeah, they're the guy's front face is from... Congratulations, it's from the Legend of Swordsman and Fairy, so... Great things, Sinjin Nanjing. You basically decide to go ahead and choose random art styles again, and just to get to some demigods and some demigods if you're, if you're new to the channel. You should go watch that one. And yeah, so it looks like they just can't stop using the fronts of people of people's faces from demigods demigods, but I mean... Uh, Legend of Swordsman Fairy. But yeah, outside the entire effect, this town is just completely ran with random paths and... Dark shading trees. Nice things in Junanjing. Taking it from some Turbo Graphic 16 game. It's a Japanese game, so I can't really pronounce it because I'm bad at Japanese. Oh, yes, here we are. Here's the character that's from... Swordsman Fairy. And also, we can just can't. We, we just take chests. Yes, that's the most logical thing to do. Not open them, but just take them. Oh. Oh, wait, here's this random guy over here that just basically says nothing. Important. And. Yes, we can enter this house, but. There's only one other person on the other side. You know what, I'm gonna go talk to that weird person. Okay, here we are, the potion shop. No, it's just another one of those weird random shops. Oh, you just, you just experienced that this is the entire music that we're gonna play throughout the entire game. So let's point these pillars here. Hey, uh, weird decision not being assigned. And the world map is essentially the same thing, except with mountains. Great thing. Great. Oh, here's Bell. So the first thing we come across is a enemy from Final Fantasy 3. So you're still not giving up on Final Fantasy enemies, so that's even weirder. And same thing like Demi Gods and Semi Devils. <coughs> Sorry. Once you, once you level up, you have to have enemies at the same level.
So yeah, you gotta make your way through this blue mountain area with a bunch of dead ends and... Human enemies that look like they just drawn over like at 999 times. Because all of them look very blunt and are very much almost to abstractism. Oh yeah, that path to me leads to nowhere. So yeah, the enemies you're going to encounter in this game are basically all the usual enemies that you usually encounter in a Sinjin Dungeon game, but ten times worse. Like the snake thing again. Jeez, can you stop raising that from, you, from last fame? And this weird bee. Okay, I'm not sure what your point is, but... And also, any single time we level up, we have to get the potions to be available. And that means that the enemy should also level up. I guess they have not, so... Congrats to that, the enemies in the area just got easier. Something you wouldn't expect from a Senjin Nanjin game, so I was wrong. So I guess it does technically go by area. Um, now we can make us a harder slug, and that's what those things are called. Go defeat that guy in one hit. After more walking around with this weird walking thing. I get nothing I'm gonna say here because all this is just more cringe. And then we get to an area that looks exactly the same except for brownish mountain. Great stuff, Sinjin Nanjing, and we have the original color palette of the enemies. And also, I hope you like this area, because it's a church area that was actually really used in martial arts world. And there's also a starry sky in the background. Okay, what in the world are you trying to do here? Can't be a Sinjin Dungeon game without that happening. Now that they do have unique enemies like slugs and random bee thingies. There's all sorts of weird nonsense stuff that usually makes Sinjin Dungeon games. Okay, so there's that weird random area. After going through more poorly, de poorly designed trees, coming across even more poorly, poorly designed enemies, we get to this area, but we won't go there yet because there's still a lot more to this area than that, so... Outside of us coming out, coming a random encounter with a brown fox, kudos to anybody who thought of that idea. We still have to go through even cringier paths of just trees just to lead to dead ends. Like that was ever gonna help. We still have more random encounters, and oh, would you look at that? I can just defeat them in one hit. <laughs> Sorry. Except for some enemies, which always seem to be harder than others. You still got even random areas with random paths leading to nowhere. That one just killed me. At least I know I have until 126 just to get to the next level up. If we go up here, we don't even encounter another village. We encounter another house. With enemies in it. This is even a village, it's just a house. You enter inside, and there's automatically a random encounter. Oh, that's great. So what is this house used for? Easy, it's used for nothing. Yeah, I think that was gonna be weak. Very good, I think that 
I wanted one hit. Got another level up. Buy more ammo and P potion. Of HP potions. There's a, a sort of easy one. Oh great, now I need to run back just to get more potions. If I can get back there. I think I can. Just hope I don't die about halfway through trying to get back there. Succeeded in running. So yeah, there's simply one in and that's in that village, so preferably grind around this area. Boy, but the path to get there is just very long. But thankfully, it seems to be mostly easy runaways. And also, you can't just count kind of slap. We're almost there, wrong area. Let's hope I can succeed in the next two battles. Wrong twist. And there you go, I arrived back at the village. Congrats. Yes, I want to heal mine, and this comes to potion shop, which I believe is over here. I want this. Okay, we should be able to go now and see what's in the armor. Nothing. Okay, outside of an armor upgrade, I guess we can't. We can, we can we buy armor and potions in the same area like we could in a couple other games? Yes, we can. I only got 55, so not enough. So, as you're wondering for the next areas, well, white hat, well, the white. Which is called the White Mountains. Blue has its village, or the home starting village. White has two areas, church and probably or is a temple, I'm not sure. It's probably a temple. And brown, we will have to wait and see. Anyway, even harder random encounters because I guess the enemies just got harder for some odd reason in an area that should be easy. I don't know what's up with this game, but it's completely confusing like that guy's look. Okay, just ran away. So you know, let's just keep on running away from everything that we see. And heal when you need to. So again, after going through, confusing, even confusing me even more so, because that's how Nanjing games work, is to confuse you. In surprisingly weird ways, we have more half-trees, so get from that thing, and here's one of the unique enemies. It's a white tiger. Or more like a re- or more like a repaint of the tiger we already saw that was orange, just now it's white. Oh great, looks like they put that through a Game Boy printer. And there's the normal variant. Not that different outside of color. So yeah, that's just the weird, the wor the weird world of Sinjin Nanjing games. Now you may have noticed the system is from somewhere in... Actually, yes it is, because it was later used in NJ-070. The Swordsman? Not my own Swordsman, because that's nice code, but just the Swordsman.
believe there's anything up there. So again, that over there is the abandoned is the abandoned house until we get to an event area. There just leads to nothing. And the white mountain areas, which is apparently white and gray. If we go over here, it's still more nothingness. As usual, more mountains. And do we finally get another village? Just guess if there's another village. It's still more mountains. Still more weird random encounters. I died. Great, so this is the position. A sitting position. Well, may as well do a two in one, so... Here's the other game that uses exactly the same thing, although... Although it's very different, because... Oh, well, you're gonna see. NJ071. Moon Christier Sword. It uses that same Legend of Fancy Realm tops type style. And also, the yu gi -Oh tracks are back. And what in the world are these trees? Like, seriously, can somebody explain to me what in the world are these tre tree designs? And great, we got Hydra, we got Hydras now. Also, we still have the rotating symbol. Also, we still have the rotating menu, so... Great thing, Senjin Yanjing. And we also have to come across giant mosquitoes. And some guy that's probably that's probably edited from there was a Jin Yong. The same guy again, just now doing more damage. A guy that's from Tail from not Tales of Fantasia. A woolly mammoth. Like that like those things exist in this time period. We enter another strange area with all the strange weirdness that Kinda looks like the indie games from the 2000s, so... Is that what trying to is that what vibe they were going for? The indie game style in Chinese? But, and if you don't know what indie is, it means independent, so... They're already a major company, yet they're, they're making this weird MS-DOS style type of paint. We got another weird enemy from... Probably an edited version of... Potions. Yes, I do. Really, from the heroes of Jin Yong. A woolly mammoth that's harder, and our village, which has nobody outside, but yet everybody inside their houses, or are they just gone? No, they're here, except they all look weird. I would take a rest for that. If you go down south, you find even more random encounters, but staying in here, you find. Lamp posts, nobody inside one of the houses. Still this weird music playing in the background. The sword shop. Going over here, even another random encounter path. Nobody inside this house. And the area we're supposed to go in. Which after we're going through a bunch of more human random encounters. And also I like how the this is about the background of the battles, but it's just all greens. Like, nothing in the area that you like. We come across this oddball area with these neighborhood-style trees. We come across a single house with nothing inside of it. But actually have to go onto the side doors. Who designs a house that way? So we come across that guy. This guy. Again, an indie game style. So the guy joins you and you have to go to the main part of the house now. Is it one of the side half is one of the side doors? Oh yeah, there's even secondary houses. Where you meet up with the guy. He leaves, you rest, he comes back. And apparently the master is dead. Probably killed by sorry. Probably killed by these two people with one guy having his eyebrow weird and another one like being in and that's kind of that type of style. And then 
you have to... Wait, hold on a second. You're meant to talk to all of them. He's not dead. You just have to talk to him before he dies. Great. Like, that's not weird at all. You then leave the area. And presumably go ahead and enter all the other rooms to see if there's any other inventor cutscene. Okay, there's the same Buddhist statue we saw in a couple other games. Say so just random stuff being taken from other games again. And then we leave the school because we did nothing. There's yet another cutscene. Where he then transforms from black to brown. And we fight him. Like, that's not weird at all. Also, okay, are we supposed to fail? No, we weren't. You know what that means? That means grinding. This area again. Bubbles up. Here's a gourd symbol, which means we can buy more of this stuff. Now let's just see what's down south. Okay, there's two paths, and they're both incredibly long. Is there another village on the end? No, it's just the more paths and a monster from Golden Sun. seems to keep on missing me. And a person I presume is blocking the path for some odd reason. Can we go past by him? Yeah, we can't. So after more heroes of Jin Yong and giant mosquito encounters, we're gonna have to go back and look over even more of this area because we're grinding. So yeah, looks like I'm just leveling up. There's nothing to this area. No, I'm about to die. I'm about to die. Yeah, like that was gonna happen anyway. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, so we got a golden sun enemy that makes no sense. And the path leads to another person just blocking the way, so... Even weirder stuff. Anyway, so I go up north is that event and... And enemies just got a whole lot of heart over here. Okay, I'm gonna die again. Okay, 
case after just going down this weird lane area for a while. Again, I'm about to die. Almost. Oh, right, here's how weird the animation is. It's like him never moving from that same lane position. Yeah, turn up here. Which, oh, look at this. Another weird training area, but you've only got side doors now, and a Buddha with whatever in the world that that thing is. And then the shrimp on his head for some odd reason. And of course, the doors are closed to make it look like it's just part of the wall. And we've never had troops. like NG090 or the backboard of a DS game. The backboard of the DS game also has a menu very similar to this, but oh, did I already run out? Oh, I already ran out. I died yet again, so... Well, let's do grinding up here. Since this seems to be the easier area. One weapon. Do we have a weapon? It's ten to five, twenty to five, ten to zero, ten to ten. Get the interest. And now time to go grinding for even more money. Which I'm now weaker than the enemies. So, yeah, we got. One head snakes, but that, that just seems strange to see without two heads because that's what we've usually been able to see for now. I should be able to get the upgraded armor. Oh yeah, get up to 400 now. Yeah, there we go. Sell this one off and... And get the remainder of stuff by buying potions. Yeah, it seems to be 
doing better than all the other ones. That was some two weird games. Sorry if again it was very short, but yeah, there's really not that much other non two games to cover about outside of nice co outside of nice code and so and at least one that was a tile screen hack. Well, I hope to get all the other rare ones running soon, so that might take a while. But anyway, guys, that was about it. I'll see you all in the next video, which will definitely be longer than this. Bye.